Crete Island has been isolated since 5.3 million years ago, initially consisting of smaller islands that later formed its current shape due to tectonic uplift in the Pleistocene. During this period, the island was home to a few endemic land mammals. Deer, which are good swimmers, colonized Crete around 300,000 years ago, diversifying into eight species, all classified under the genus Candia cervus. It was notable for its tiny size, goat-like legs and large antlers used for display rather than combat. Human presence on Crete, evidenced by ancient petroglyphs and stone tools, suggests they may have encountered these dwarf deer, contributing to their extinction around 21,000 years ago during the last glacial maximum. The rapid climate change, nutritional deficiencies, and human pressures likely led to the extinction of the Cretan deer. The tufted deer is mainly solitary or found in pairs, is crepuscular, and travels fixed routes in its vigorously defended territory. It is a timid animal that prefers well-covered areas and flees in cat-like jumps when alarmed. Mating season is from September to December, with males using loud barks to attract females and defend territory with their elongated canines. Their diet consists of leaves, twigs, fruit and various vegetation, making them both grazers and browsers. The population, estimated at 300,000 to 500,000 in 1998, faces threats from over-harvesting and habitat loss, with limited provincial protection in China. Conservation efforts include participation in the Yellow Species Survival Plan to maintain genetic diversity through increased zoo breeding programs. Male muntjac have short antlers that can regrow, but they primarily use their downward-pointing canine teeth, or tusks, to fight for territory. These tusks are a distinguishing feature, as native British wild deer lack them, though water deer also have visible tusks but are less widespread. Despite resembling the tusks of water deer and musk deer, muntjac are not related to either species. Muntjac possess various scent glands for communication and territorial marking, using their facial glands to mark the ground and other individuals. They can voluntarily open their preorbital glands near the eyes, a capability even seen in young fawns. Ongoing hunting is a major threat to Gongshan Munchak survival. While the population cannot be accurately counted, they are often seen on camera trapping studies which suggest a population well above being endangered. They have been observed within two large protected areas in Myanmar, Kakabaratsi National Park and the Pankanratsi Wildlife Sanctuary. Genetic studies have shown it to be very closely related to the hairy-fronted muntjac, possibly close enough to be considered the same species despite different coloration, though this position is disputed. Munchak are of great interest in evolutionary studies because of their dramatic chromosome variations and the recent discovery of several new species. The Reeves's Munchak is the mammal with the lowest recorded chromosome number. It feeds on herbs, blossoms, succulent shoots, fungi, berries, grasses, and nuts, and has also been reported to eat tree bark. Eggs and carrion are eaten opportunistically. It is also called the barking deer due to its distinctive barking sound, though this name is also used for other species of muntjac. The barking sound is common during mating or when provoked. Its preferred habitats are forest and shrubland. It is a solitary and crepuscular animal. Both males and females defend small territories that they mark with preorbital gland secretions that are thought to be pheromonal in nature. When fighting, males first use their antlers to push enemies off balance so they can wound them with their 5 cm upper canine teeth. The Sicilian deer is an endemic species of fallow deer evolved from ancient mainland species, that's why the antlers are less derived to those of modern fallow deer. Similar to other insular large herbivores, it was smaller in size, around 20% smaller than a modern fallow deer, however, 
the antlers would still be quite impressive structure for display and interspecies combat. Agile and fast in case of danger, this deer can run at a maximum speed of 50 km per hour over short distances. Being naturally less muscular than other cervids such as the roe deer, they are not as fast. Fallow deer can also jump up to 1.7 meters high and up to 5 meters in length. Fallow deer exhibit a range of coat colors, including white, black and with white spots. This variety is unique among deer species and makes them easily distinguishable. Male, known as bucks, have distinctive palmate antlers that resemble the shape of a hand with spread fingers. These antlers are shed and regrown annually, becoming more complex as the deer ages. During the rutting season, males engage in impressive displays to attract females and deter rivals. These displays include vocalizations like groaning, parallel walking, and lecking, where males gather in a small area to display for females. They are highly adaptable and thrive in various environments, from dense forests to open grasslands. This adaptability has allowed them to become established in many parts of the world outside their native range. Females and young form loose groups, while males are often solitary outside the breeding season. During the rut, males become highly territorial and competitive. In the wild, fallow deer can live up to 12 to 16 years. Fallow deer have a unique gait called pronking, where they spring into the air with all four feet off the ground. This behavior is thought to be a display of fitness and a way to evade predators. In the late Pliocene fossil deposit of saint valier in France, deer are the most common species. Two middle-sized taxa, Metacerviceros and Croazidoceros, are particularly abundant. We have performed functional morphology and micro and mesoware analyses in order to explain if and how the two herbivorous species avoided intraguild competition. The results of the micro wear analysis show a clear difference in the wear pattern of their tooth enamel, demonstrating the two species had different feeding behavior habits. Croazidoceros was a mid sized species, similar in size to the living fallow deer. It stood a little over 1 meter tall and weighed around 60 kilograms it was one of the first modern looking deer. It had complex antlers, with four or even five short branches. They were long and lyre shaped, with the tines branching off tangentially from the central branch. It was probably a browser. Its teeth were characterized by a high degree of wear, indicating that it fed on abrasive plants. Somber deer are nocturnal or crepuscular, with males living alone for much of the year and females forming small herds of up to 16 individuals. These herds typically consist of an adult female, her young, and sometimes a subordinate female, which is unusual for deer. Somber often gathers near water and are excellent swimmers. They feed on a variety of vegetation, including grasses, foliage, fruit, and water plants, and are known for their scent marking and foot stamping communication. In protected areas in India, Sri Lanka, and Thailand, somber can form large herds, while in Taiwan, they are farmed for their antlers. Stags exhibit unique behaviors like wallowing in urine-soaked soil, marking trees with their antlers, and spraying urine on themselves. Despite lacking antlers, female somber defends their young from predators, and somber are a significant prey species for tigers, leopards, and crocodiles. Arvernoceros, sometimes called the giraffe deer, was found in early Pleistocene sites from Eastern Europe, in Moldova, Greece, and Russia. The remains comprise of an almost complete antler, some cranial fragments and metacarpals, which allow for a quite impressive size estimate of 700 kilograms that basically makes it one of the largest species to ever exist. Not only that, but the very long limbs indicate similar proportion to some extinct giraffids. This could possibly mean that it was a high browser that occupied a similar niche to giraffes. Skomberg's deer was a graceful species, 
the pelt was a dark brown with lighter underparts. Males possessed basket-like antlers, upon which all the main tines branched. This caused the deer to have up to 33 points on their antlers and the outer edge of the rack to be up to 90 centimeters long. Little is known about females of the species, beyond that they did not have antlers. Commercial production of rice for export began in the late 90th century in Thailand, leading to the loss of nearly all grassland and swamp areas on which this deer depended. Intensive hunting pressure at the turn of the century restricted the species further until it became extinct. The wild population of Skomberg's deer is thought to have died out because of overhunting by 1932, with the last captive individual, an animal living at a temple in Samut Sakan, being killed in 1938 by a drunk man. Male ELD's deer have unique, lyre-shaped antlers that can grow up to a meter in length. They are listed as endangered. Their populations have been severely reduced due to habitat loss, hunting, and competition with livestock. ELD's deer inhabit a variety of ecosystems, including dry forests, grasslands, and wetlands. They are particularly associated with seasonally flooded habitats, where they feed on grasses, leaves and aquatic plants. They have long legs and a sleek body, which are adaptations for moving efficiently through their varied habitats. This physical build helps them navigate both open grasslands and dense forests. The breeding season for ELD's deer usually occurs between February and May. During this time, males use their antlers to fight for access to females. After a gestation period of around 240 days, females give birth to a single fawn. Despite their endangered status, there have been successful conservation programs for ELD's deer, particularly in India and Myanmar, where captive breeding and reintroduction programs have helped stabilize some populations. The Sika deer, notable for retaining its spots into adulthood unlike many deer species, exhibits varied spot patterns across its subspecies, with mainland forms having larger and more visible spots compared to those from Japan and Taiwan. They range in color from mahogany to black, with occasional white individuals, and develop a darker, shaggier coat in winter. They are active throughout the day but become more nocturnal in human disturbed areas, with seasonal migrations occurring in mountainous regions like Japan, where they move to lower elevations in winter. They exhibit diverse social behaviors, from solitary living to forming large herds in autumn and winter, and males are territorial during the rutting season, marking their territory with scrapes and strong musky odors. Females give birth to a single fawn after a gestation period of seven months, nursed for up to ten months before becoming independent at about one year old. The red deer is the fourth largest extant deer species, behind the moose, elk and somber deer. It is a ruminant, eating its food in two stages and having an even number of toes on each hoof, like camels, goats, and cattle. The antlers are testosterone-driven and as the stag's testosterone levels drop in the autumn, the velvet is shed and the antlers stop growing. With the approach of autumn, the antlers begin to calcify and the stag's testosterone production builds for the approaching rut. Red deer are ruminants, characterized by a four-chambered stomach. Genetic evidence indicates that the red deer, as traditionally defined, is a species group, rather than a single species, though exactly how many species the group includes remains disputed. The closely related and slightly larger American elk, or wapiti, native to North America and Northeastern Asia, had been regarded as a subspecies of red deer, but recently it has been established as a distinct species. The ancestor of all red deer probably originated in Central Asia and resembled Sika deer. Elk, known for their robust bodies, slender legs, and short tails, vary in size and weight across subspecies, with males typically weighing 170 to 500 kg and females never above 300 kg their antlers, made of bone, grow rapidly covered by velvet during growth and shed annually. Antlers typically have around six tines, with Roosevelt elk's antlers weighing up to 18 kg. Seasonal coat changes help them adapt to winter conditions, 
shedding heavy coats by early summer. Calves are born spotted and lose their markings by the end of summer. Elk are highly social, forming large herds in summer and segregating by gender during other times. The mating season, marked by bugling calls and antler displays, sees dominant males defending harems of cows. Female elk have a short estrus cycle and give birth after an eight to nine month gestation. They isolate themselves before calving and calves join the herd after two weeks. Migration patterns involve moving to higher altitudes in spring and back to lower altitudes in fall, with notable migrations observed in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. Elk primarily graze but also browse, consuming grasses, forbs and tree bark depending on the season. Range management includes monitoring populations through elk pellet group surveys, which also indicate resource utilization and health impacts related to diet changes. Thorold's deer has a number of physical and physiological adaptations to its high-altitude environment. The short legs and broad hooves make it an agile climber, able to use steep mountainous terrain to escape predators. Their nasal cavities are unusually large, allowing them to breathe in rarefied high-altitude air, while the thick hair protects against the cold. Thorold's deer is a crepuscular animal, and normally lives in herds of at least 10 individuals, with bachelor male herds and female juvenile herds staying separated until the breeding season. In past centuries, herds containing hundreds of the deer were reported at high elevations, however, today, herds of over 50 to 100 individuals are rare. With their square-shaped lips, they are predominantly grazers that feed on a wide range of low-growing terrestrial plants, primarily grasses and sedges, but also browse on occasion and will consume larger plants. They have few natural predators, although Himalayan wolves and snow leopards have been known to eat Thorold's deer on occasion, and stray or feral dogs may target fawns. Pear David's deer, known for its large size, reaches up to 2 meters in length and stands about 1.2 meters tall at the shoulder. It features distinctive branched antlers, with long backward pointing tines and a predominantly reddish tan coat in summer, transitioning to dull gray in winter, complemented by a mane and dorsal stripe. A semi-aquatic species, it excels in swimming and spends significant time in water, where it grazes on aquatic plants alongside its grass diet. Reproductively, Pear David's deer exhibits typical behaviors seen in temperate deer species, with stags engaging in rutting behaviors such as urine sniffing, wallowing, and antler adornment to establish dominance. Hinds display estrus behaviors like frequent urination and receptivity. Isolated from the wild for over 1,200 years, Pear David's deer perceives humans as primary threats due to historical absence of natural predators. During rutting season, Females show heightened vigilance in response to male mating activities, reflecting adapted anti-predator responses despite reduced exposure to diverse threats. Euclidoceros was suggested to have reached a body mass of 250 to 300 kg species of Euclidoceros are noted for their branching antlers, with a large number of tines projecting from the front part of the main antler beam. In many species like Euclidoceros tenoids the antlers have a comb-like branching pattern, while those of the type species Euclidoceros dicranios has a more complex dichotomous branching pattern. The antlers are proportionally large relative to body size, and are among the largest antlers known among deer. The teeth are similar in some aspects to those of the genus Cervus, but lack certain derived characters typical of the teeth of that genus. Analysis of the limbs of Euclidoceros suggests that they are most similar to living deer that occupy open habitats. Dental microware analysis of Euclidoceros tenoid suggests that its diet was largely plastic and widely varied according to local conditions. During the lower Pleistocene, characterized by alternating glacial and interglacial cycles, Euclidoceros, a large cervid, thrived in Europe amidst faunal dispersals. Using dental microware texture analysis, researchers examined Euclidoceros dietary flexibility and its reflection of lower Pleistocene climatic variations. 
The wide range of dental microwear textures indicates Euclidocero's generalist feeding habits and adaptability to varying environmental conditions. Specifically, grazing signals in fossil assemblages suggest deposition during warmer interglacial periods with deciduous vegetation, while browsing signals likely correspond to colder glacial periods featuring developed herbaceous and shrubby layers. The Irish Elk studied extensively since 1998 by biologist Valerius Geist, was hypothesized to be adapted for running, resembling modern cursorial species like reindeer. Geist noted its similar body proportions to oryx and saiga antelope, indicating it may have been capable of high-speed running. Fossil finds at Ballybetig Bog revealed segregated populations of small antlered bucks, suggesting seasonal segregation between males and females driven by nutritional needs and mating behaviors. During rutting season, Irish elk stags underwent significant physiological changes, gaining weight rapidly to compete for mates, shedding antlers annually, and enduring nutritional stress. Their large, distinctive antlers were likely used in mating displays and combat, featuring robust structures adapted for interlocking during fights. Dental and dietary studies indicate a mixed feeding strategy, adaptable to both browsing and grazing depending on environmental conditions, with preferences for nutrient-rich forage during antler growth. The Irish elk's extinction has been linked to several factors, including climatic shifts reducing suitable habitats, diminishing food resources, and possibly human hunting pressures. The species experienced range contractions during glacial periods and showed a decline in genetic diversity, suggesting vulnerability to environmental changes. By the early Holocene, the Irish elk had largely disappeared from its once extensive range, leaving behind a legacy of adaptation and decline shaped by millennia of environmental challenges and human interactions. The species Megaloceros matratensis is described here on the basis of material from 10 localities and levels in a terrace of the Manzanares River, south of Madrid. This species acquired features, such as enlarged premolars, very thick molar enamel, and a low mandibular condyle, which are masticatory adaptations to an, as yet, unknown diet. The species itself formed part of the diet of people which lived in the area. If found in other areas, this species could be indicative for this transitional period. Giant deer might be expected to be good examples of Cope's rule, which holds that species tend to evolve larger body sizes. However, Megaloceros matratensis is the last member of a lineage which gradually decreased in size during the Middle Pleistocene. Sinomegaceros were large deer, with estimated body masses ranging from 500 kilograms, making them among the largest known deer. They featured palmate antlers with transversely and vertically oriented palmation. They were likely grazers, adapted to feeding on grasses. It is considered to be part of the group of giant deer, with a close relationship to megaloceros. Mitochondrial genomes from late Pleistocene Chinese and Siberian Sinomegaceros indicate that the mitochondrial diversity of Megaloceros giganteus is nested within the diversity of Sinomegaceros, suggesting that the two lineages interbred after their initial split. Many members of the genus are noted for their distinctive palmate antler brow tines. Sardinian deer was a Sardinian megaserine deer, sometimes classified within the mainland genus Megaloceros, however, genetic studies prove a more distant relation than initially thought. It was widespread on both Sardinia and Corsica from middle to late Pleistocene, and its remains are very common. Just like other deer, the females lived in herds while males were more solitary. Its dentition indicates it was mainly a grazer and was found all over the island. Interestingly, Fossils of footprints have been found in coastal sites of the island, indicating the deer descended to the rocky shores and beaches, probably looking for salt crusts and minerals on the rocks. This helped the males grow their magnificent antlers. Primagaceros verticornis is a species from the Middle Pleistocene of Europe, while it is a megaserine and very large in size, it is thought to not be ancestral to megaloceros, 
but rather a separate lineage that evolved into a large form independently. It ranged from the Mediterranean to Great Britain and was probably adapted to mixed grassland and forest environments. Close relatives, such as Primagacero solilhicus, reached Corsica, where they gradually evolved into Primagaceros cotsioti, the last surviving member of the genus. The cheetle is diurnal, adjusting its activity patterns based on temperature, resting during hot afternoons and becoming most active at dawn and dusk as temperatures moderate. They typically move in single file along defined paths, maintaining a distance of several times their body width. When alert, cheetle freeze to assess threats, often followed by group flight into dense cover, tails raised to display their white undersides. They are agile, capable of leaping over 1.5 meters or slipping under obstacles, preferring to stay within 300 meters of cover. Cheetle exhibit gregarious behavior, forming loose herds led by matriarchal females with offspring of various ages, including juveniles and males. Herd sizes range widely, from small groups to gatherings of up to 100 individuals, which disband frequently except for the maternal herd. Seasonal variations in herd composition occur due to female isolation before giving birth and male departure during the rutting season. Predators include Indian wolves, tigers, leopards and various smaller predators, with males generally less vulnerable than females and juveniles. Both male and female reindeer grow antlers, which is rare among deer species. The antlers are large and broad, with complex branching patterns. They are shed annually and regrow, typically larger each year in males, making them impressive symbols of strength and adaptation. They have specialized hooves that are well adapted to their arctic habitat. They are large and concave in shape, acting like snowshoes to prevent them from sinking into the snow. The hooves also adapt seasonally, becoming softer in summer for better traction on wet terrain. Reindeer are famous for their long-distance migrations, which can cover up to 5,000 kilometers annually. These migrations are driven by seasonal changes in food availability and weather conditions, and they are crucial for their survival in the harsh Arctic environment. Their coat is thick and dense, consisting of both an outer layer of guard hairs and an insulating undercoat. This adaptation helps them stay warm in temperatures as low as minus 45 degrees Celsius and protects them from wind and moisture. Reindeer have keen eyesight, which is essential for detecting predators such as wolves and polar bears in their habitat. Their eyes also change color with the seasons, becoming gold in summer to help them see better during 24-hour daylight and blue in winter to enhance vision in low-light conditions. They are strong swimmers and can cross wide rivers and lakes during migrations. They use their hooves like paddles and their buoyant bodies to stay afloat, making them adept at traversing their arctic landscape. Reindeer have evolved to live in some of the most extreme environments on Earth. Their ability to endure cold, scarcity of food, and long periods of darkness showcases their remarkable adaptability and resilience. The gray brocket is a selective herbivore that varies its diet, including a wide range of plants and fruits depending on seasonal and local availability. During the dry season, it consumes tough fruits from trees like Cezalpinia paraguariensis, alongside occasional intake of cacti, bromeliad fruits, and succulent leaves and roots for water. Reproduction occurs year-round with sexual maturity reached at around 18 months, gestation lasting seven months, and potential for two offspring annually. Scent marking through urination, defecation, thrashing, and forehead rubbing serves as territorial communication among gray brockets. They are primarily nocturnal and solitary, with males defending larger territories than females, who maintain smaller core areas. When not in cover, they exhibit shyness and nervousness, particularly in captivity. The white-tailed deer is recognized by its reddish-brown coat in spring and summer, 
which transitions to a gray-brown color in fall and winter, distinguished by its characteristic white underside tail. It exhibits a unique alarm response by raising its tail to signal predators when alarmed. This species varies widely in size and weight across its range, with males typically weighing 68 to 136 kg females weigh between 40 to 90 kg, with smaller sizes observed in tropical populations. Their horizontally slit pupils enable excellent night vision and color vision during the day, aiding in motion detection in low-light conditions. White-tailed deer are herbivorous, consuming a diverse diet of legumes, shoots, leaves, acorns, fruits, and occasionally mushrooms and small animals. They have a four-chambered stomach that facilitates efficient digestion of plant matter through foregut fermentation. They are adaptable to various habitats, from forests and savannas to suburban areas, where they thrive in edge habitats. Human activities, including hunting and habitat alteration, significantly impact their populations and behaviors, contributing to ongoing ecological discussions and conservation efforts. Marsh deer are solitary animals or living in groups with less than six individuals with only an adult male. It lives only in marsh areas in which the level of water is less than 70 centimeters deep. They are swift swimmers. The marshes with their high vegetation density protect them from predators and provide them with food. These deer also have a small migratory pattern, they follow the water levels between the dry season and flooding season. With the fluctuation in water levels, they are able to find new food sources that the water uncovers during the dry season. Some freshwater ponds on the Pantanal wetland, Brazil reported low densities of individuals dictating that those ponds are not able to support large populations of marsh deer. Since marsh deer live near aquatic habitats, they eat a majority of their diet in aquatic plants. A study was conducted and they found 40 different species of plants in which they ate. The southern pudu is characterized by being the second smallest deer in the world. It is slightly larger than its sister species, the northern pudu, being 35 to 45 centimeters tall at the shoulder and weighs 12 kilograms the antlers of the southern pudu grow to be 9 centimeters long and tend to curve back, somewhat like a mountain goat. Its coat is a dark chestnut brown, and tends to tuft in the front, covering the antlers. It lives in forests, including both mature and disturbed forests, typically with a dense understory, but it does nevertheless prefer open spaces with rich vegetation for feeding. It is found at lower elevations than its sister species, from sea level to 1,700 meters elevation. Roe deer are thought to have evolved from a species in the Eurasian genus Procaprialis, with some 10 species occurring from the late Miocene to the early Pleistocene, which moved from the east to central Europe over the millennia. Roe deer are most closely related to the water deer, and, counterintuitively, the three species in this group, called the Capriolini, are most closely related to moose. Although roe deer were once classified as belonging to the Cervini subfamily, they are now classified as part of the Odicoalini, which includes the deer from the New World. Roe deer are relatively small, with a shoulder height ranging from 60 to 75 centimeters and weighing between 15 to 35 kilograms only males have antlers, which are straight with one tine, typically growing up to 25 centimeters long. They shed and regrow their antlers annually. They are solitary or live in small family groups consisting of a mother and her offspring. They are crepuscular, spending the rest of the day resting in sheltered spots. Bucks are territorial and mark their territories with scent from glands located around their eyes and hooves. They establish these territories primarily during the rutting season to attract females and deter rival males. Roe deer have excellent senses, including keen eyesight and hearing, which help them detect predators and navigate their environment effectively. They have been traditionally hunted for their meat and hides. Roe deer play a crucial role in their ecosystems by influencing vegetation through browsing, which can affect plant diversity and structure in their habitats.
Libroses resembled modern moose in appearance but had a unique set of palmate antlers, similar to those of moose but with broader, flatter extensions. The antlers were adapted for browsing in forests, featuring large, flat surfaces that could effectively strip leaves from branches. It was larger than most modern deer species, comparable in size to a modern moose, with estimates suggesting it stood around 2 meters tall at the shoulder. Many prehistoric moose species developed antlers that were palmate, meaning they featured broad, flattened tines resembling a human hand. This adaptation likely helped in clearing vegetation and intimidating rivals during mating season. Servalces scotti, commonly known as the stag moose, was a large herbivorous mammal resembling modern moose with long legs and complex, heavily branching palmate antlers. It reached lengths of up to 2.5 meters and weighed around 700 kilograms residing in North America during the Pleistocene era alongside megafauna like woolly mammoths and saber-toothed cats, they became extinct approximately 11,000 years ago, towards the end of the last ice age. The stag moose likely inhabited marshes, swamps, and spruce taiga environments, adapting to changing flora and fauna as glaciers retreated, possibly leading to its extinction due to competition with emerging moose species and other herbivorous mammals like bison. Moose are giants of the deer family, with adult males standing up to 2.2 meters tall at the shoulder. They can weigh between 380 to 700 kilograms male grow antlers annually, which are the largest among all deer species. These antlers can span up to 2 meters in width and weigh up to 30 kilograms they are shed each winter and regrown in spring, primarily for mating displays and dominance. Moose are herbivores with a varied diet. They primarily feed on aquatic plants, as well as terrestrial vegetation like shrubs, leaves and bark. In winter, they will browse on twigs and pine cones. They are excellent swimmers, capable of moving swiftly through water. They can swim up to 10 km per hour and dive underwater to reach aquatic plants. Moose are generally solitary animals except during mating season in autumn when bulls compete for females. They are found in boreal and mixed deciduous forests of North America and Eurasia. They thrive in cold climates and are well adapted to snowy conditions. They are susceptible to infestations by winter ticks, especially during mild winters. These parasites can weaken moose, affecting their health and even leading to death in severe cases. Moose play a crucial role in their ecosystems by browsing on vegetation, which helps maintain forest health and diversity. Their presence influences plant growth and regeneration patterns. They also have a highly developed sense of smell, which they use for finding food, detecting predators, and communicating with other moose. Each moose has its own unique antler shape and pattern, influenced by genetics, diet, and age. No two sets of antlers are exactly alike. They are a popular site for wildlife enthusiasts and tourists in their habitats. However, approaching them can be dangerous as they can be unpredictable and may charge if they feel threatened. <laughs>